There's nothing more frustrating, I think, than to, to be praying and feeling like you're not getting answers. Now, we know about waiting and we know about testing and things like that, but eventually we want to we wanna feel like that it's pretty clear to us that God's hearing our prayers and, and He's answering us. How many of you know it really excites you and stirs your faith up when you pray for something and you see a very clear answer? And I mean, you know that you know that it's God. And so I'm committed to prayer and I'm sure that many of you are. And so I just want to make sure that I'm doing it in a way that is going to, at least from my part of what I can do, is going to assure that I'm going to get answers and that I'm not blocking or hindering God in any way. Now, prayer is so important to our life, our walk with God. And I, I probably read a book or study prayer at least probably four times a year. And I think we all need to continue hearing about prayer and being reminded of how powerful it is and, and, and how important it is. And, you know, to pray just simply means to ask. With God, we should never assume and we should never presume because that's rather rude. We just need to ask. I don't believe that prayer ever should be complicated. I don't believe that it's something that should be hard or difficult or that we should dread. I think that eventually you may start out with, I mean, I, I have a prayer time every morning, but I like to look at prayer more like breathing, where you're just praying all throughout the day. You come to depend on God to the point where you just know that you need to be leaning on Him all the time. We all know that Satan will do everything he can to try to keep us from praying. How I many of you noticed that when you're trying to have your prayer time that you think about everything in the world that you, all these things you've forgotten. You can, if you ever need to remember anything, just go try to pray. <laughs> because right then you'll remember everything that you need to take care of. So I actually keep a, a notepad by me when I pray. So every time that I'm reminded of something I need to do, I can jot it down and not have to get up and go do it right then. <laughs> Satan also loves to... Um, disturb us. He loves to, to upset us. So when we're trying to spend time with God, we end up doing nothing but worrying and complaining rather than actually praying prayers that are going to be productive for the kingdom of God. So how, is it all right with you if I just do a couple of teachings here on prayer and get us all stirred up in that area again and, and excited about it? So the first, the first thing, the first roadblock are the first hindrance. And you know, I like to use examples when God puts them on my heart because I just think that they leave a picture in us that we don't forget. So the point is, is that if I'm gonna be praying, I wanna make sure that, that my prayers are getting through. And I wanna make sure that God's answers are getting through. But if there's a roadblock, then I may just be, but there's something hindering me and I can't get through. They told me, interestingly enough, that on the, the route coming here tonight, I didn't see them because I wasn't paying attention, but there was signs like this everywhere. Road closed, road closed, road closed. Well, I just thought that was kind of interesting, so maybe God wants to keep this in front of you all weekend. That you don't, you don't want to have roads closed. You want to open every door that you can for God's great blessings to pour into your life. The first hindrance to prayer is simply not praying. <laughs> a prayer can't get out if it's not prayed. God can't answer something that wasn't asked. And we all know that when we pray, we need to pray in faith. And so I'm not even going to make a big issue out of that except to say that everything that God does for us comes through believing. If we put our faith in Him and and we believe. So asking is a sign of that dependence on God. But right before Jesus went to the Garden of Gethsemane, which for him, he knew that things were winding down, coming to a close. He said some things recorded in the book of John toward the, toward the end that 
I think are all like maybe some of the most important things he wanted to leave us with. Like one of the things he said in John 14 was, peace I leave with you. My own peace I now give and bequeath unto you. And for me, I've come to learn that peace is one of the most important things in our life. I can tell you for me, life is just not even worth living if I can't be peaceful. And I tell you, you know, if you're going to be peaceful, if you're going to get along with people, you're going to have to work at it. It's not something that just falls on you. You can't even just pray for peace. You've got to know that you have peace and then you have to pursue it and do what you need to do to make sure that you are peaceful. But that was one of the things that he said right toward the end. I mean, he could have said a million things, but he said, remember to stay in peace. I always like to say, if there's no peace, there's no power. If you want to be powerful, you've got to stay peaceful. There's nothing that destroys the power of God more than disunity. But there's also an amazing thing that happens in four chapters in the book of John. In a handful of verses, seven times, the Holy Spirit writes down basically the same thing for us. Ask. Whatever you ask for in my name, I'll do it. Ask. <laughs> Whatever you ask for in my name, I'll do it. Actually, what prompted this was I was doing one of my three or four times a year of just stirring myself up again in prayer. I've got lots of different books on prayer, and, and I may not even read the whole book every time, but I, I like to just keep learning in that area. Uh, I also study a lot on the mouth because that <laughs> just thought I'd throw that out there for good measure. And uh, the writer of this book that I was reading said, actually, if you stop and think about what these scriptures say, they are absolutely astoundingly incredible promises. Ask whatever you will, and I'll do it if you abide in me. So we're going we're gonna to actually look at all these scriptures I hope it's not boring to you. If it is, I don't care. <laughs> because if you don't remember anything else when you leave here tonight, I want one thing to be rumbling around in your head. Ask, 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 ask. You have not because you ask not. Ask, 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 ask. Amen? Matter of fact, the first time that I got hold of this, actually from James 4, 2, it says you have not because you ask not. We'll look at that later. That's not even one of these seven we're going to look at right now. I got so excited about asking, and I got such a revelation on how I'd been trying to do so many things myself and wearing myself out, trying to change Dave and change my kids and change my circumstances and make my ministry grow and change myself. And he said, you have not because you ask not. Somebody over there is getting it. And I got so excited I could hardly stand it until I got somewhere by myself so I could just start asking. <laughs> How many of you, just in your spirit tonight, you can believe that God probably wants to do a whole lot more for us than what we know how to ask Him for? <laughs> well, if God wants to do it, He will. Nope. Now, God is sovereign and He can do anything He wants to, but His normal mode of working is somebody has to pray, and then God works. He can do anything He wants to. He's sovereign. He does step outside of that from time to time. But I believe that I'm in ministry today because somebody prayed me through some of the stuff that I was going through when I was a child. I don't know who it was. I had a grandfather who was a little bit chubby, and he sat in a rocking chair all the time and read his Bible. That's the one thing I remember about Grandpa Watson. He just rocked and prayed, and rocked and prayed, and rocked and prayed, and rocked and prayed. And I, you know, I'm sure he was praying for me. It amazes me the things that, that God covers for us through other people. I honestly can tell you, and I believe this with all my heart, if God did not have people praying for me, I don't think I would be alive. Because I know that the devil 100% despises any of us who are sharing the Word of God. When I'm on that television every day, and billions of people, I mean, I know the devil hates that. He despises it. 
And I think a lot of people that pray for me are ones that I will never know. But prayer is absolutely amazing. There's a whole lot more to it than what we think. And I think one of the reasons why the devil tries to tell everybody it doesn't do any good. You know, just when you pray, you may not always feel a lot of stuff along with it. But you pray in faith and you believe that God hears you. And then from then on, you believe one thing and one thing only. And that is God is working. God is working. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what it feels like. I don't care what I see. God is working. I prayed in faith. He says he hears me. And God is working. Can you say that right now? God is working. That's the other thing I want to make sure you leave here with tonight. I'm going to ask, and God is working. All right, John 14, 12. I assure you, most solemnly I tell you, and I love that kind of language. He's saying, now, now look, <laughs> I'm very serious when I tell you this. If anyone steadfastly believes in me, he will be able to do the things that I do, and he will do even greater things than these because I go to the Father. And I know many times I've thought, well, you know, I don't see too many greater things. But, you know, one of the things that I realized is just through all the technology we have today, people preaching the gospel today can reach more people in 30 minutes than Jesus did in his three years of ministry. That's pretty phenomenal. I mean, I'd say that's pretty amazing. If you get a friend on your heart today and you want to share something with them or pray for them, you can pick up your phone and do it. Jesus would have had to have walked days and days and days. So I think that we are doing a lot of the greater things and sometimes we don't even realize that we are. You know, he was in one human body and could only be one place at one time. But let me tell you something, Christians are all over the place. I mean, there's a lot of us and we are an army. All we need to do is start getting into agreement and stop fighting with each other. All right, so John 14, 12, I assure you most solemnly, you'll do the things I've done, greater things. Verse 13, and I will do, I myself will grant whatever, my gosh, <laughs> whatever you ask in my name, that is presenting all that I am, so that the Father may be glorified and extolled in and through the Son. Yes, I will grant. He's saying it again. He wants to make sure we're getting it. When God says something twice, it's like, are you getting this? Yes. I will grant, I myself will do for you whatever you ask in my name, that is, presenting all that I am. Now, there's a couple of things there that I want to just make mention of. Obviously, we can't just pray for anything that we want and get it. We all know that. So what in the world is this all about? Well, first of all, if you have a close walk with God, you're only going to want the things that you know are right. If you abide in him and his word abides in you, you can ask what you will and he'll do it. And the abiding means that you live, dwell, and remain in God. It doesn't just mean you go to church on Sunday and act like the devil all week. And then you read this scripture and start asking for a bunch of things with wrong motives and then wonder why God's not answering your prayer. He said here that we ask in his name, presenting all that he is. And we need to do it just like that. Father, I ask you in Jesus' name. I come in Jesus' name. When we ask God for something, we're not doing it because we've been good or not doing it because we've been bad. We go in Jesus' name. And we ask for the outrageous promises of God, even though we know full well that we don't deserve it. And we ask because if we can have the life that Jesus died for us to have, it will bring him glory and other people will be salt and light and other people will begin to want the life that we have. Christians should not be down and discouraged and dragging themselves through day after day and just barely get by all the time, barely making it. 
It's fine to start out in the prayer line, but you shouldn't be there 30 years after you're born again. <laughs> then you need to be doing the prayer line. It's fine to go get some counseling, but if you have to go get counseling every week, two or three times a week for 40 years, then I don't think you're getting any help. <laughs> Whatever you ask in my name, for the glory of God, presenting all that I am, I'll do it. John 15, 7 says, If you live in me, abide vitally united to me, and my words remain in you and continue to live in your heart, ask what you will, <laughs> and it'll be done for you. My, 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 my. But if you're abiding and His Word is living and remaining in your heart, you know what? You're going to be much more concerned about spiritual things than natural things. You're going to understand all this by the time we get done. John 15, 16. You've not chosen me, but I've chosen you, and I've appointed you, I've planted you, that you might go and bear fruit and keep on bearing, that your fruit may be lasting, that it may remain and abide, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, presenting all that I am, He will give it to you. I think that one of the things that we want to see is how astounding it is that right before, Jesus knew His time was about up. And so, in this very short period of time, He's saying, ask, 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 ask in my name. I'm giving you my name. There's authority in my name. You can go to the Father now and ask in my name because you're presenting to Him all that I am. We don't have to go anymore and say, well, you know, God, I did two things right before things wrong, and so now I guess you, there's no point in me asking you because you can't help me. We go in His name for His glory, and we ask, 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 and we, ask, and we open the door for God to do great things in our life. You have not because you ask not. John 16, 23, and 24, and this is one of my favorite because I used to not be a very happy Christian. There's too many unhappy Christians. And one of the reasons why I was unhappy was because I was so intent on trying to be the kind of person that God wanted me to be, but I was trying to do it all myself. I hadn't learned that you have not because you ask not yet. Now if there's something going on in me that needs to change, I just ask God to change me. I don't mess with struggling with it. I study the Word, and I ask God to change me. I don't try to change myself and try to change myself and try to change myself, try to change myself. I just say, God, you knew what you were getting when you got me. <laughs> Come on, Psalm 139 says He knows everything. Before we ever do it, He knows. He knows. He formed me in my mother's womb. He gave me my mouth. He knows. He knows every thought that we haven't thought yet. And so I'm, you know, I'm tender toward God. When He convicts me of anything I want to change, and I'll study in that area very diligently, I'll study in that area because I know that's my part, but I can't change myself. I can maybe control a little bit of my behavior for a while, but if there's not an inward change, then it's not going to last. And so I was not a very happy Christian because I was working at being a Christian. You're supposed to enjoy being a Christian, not have to work at it every single day of your life. So I particularly like this verse because it says in verse 23, and when this time comes, you will ask nothing of me. You will need to ask me no questions. I assure you most solemnly, I tell you, that the Father will grant you whatever you ask in my name, that is, presenting all that I am. Verse 24, please. Up until this time, you've not asked a single thing in my name, that is, presenting all that I am. But now ask and keep on asking, and you will receive so that your joy might be full. Amen? I found out I'm so much happier if instead of trying to do it myself, it, you know, if I think something's going on with Dave that needs to change, then you know what I do? I just say, God, look, I know I got a lot of problems of my own, so if I'm off base here, forgive me. Don't mean to be in pride, but I don't, I feel like that thing in Dave needs to change, 
God, would you convict him? Would you work in him? Would you bring the change? And then I just go on about my way and have a happy little life. But 25 years ago, I couldn't do that. First of all, I didn't even pray. I tried to change him. I tried to talk him into changing. I'd get mad. I'd pout. I'd feel sorry for myself. And God can't work when we behave like that. He wants us to ask so he can work. And after you ask him, if you believe he's doing what you've asked him to do, there's no reason not to be happy. We don't say, what's, what's the matter, sister? Well, I tell you, I'm just praying for God to take care of this situation. I tell you, I've been praying about it, praying about it, and praying about it. And I'm, I, I, I believe God's working, but I just, I'm so discouraged. <laughs> it don't work like that. If we really believe, <laughs> if you really believe, then why not go ahead and be happy? Well, I have a problem. I shouldn't be happy if I have a problem. Why not? God told you, cast all your care on me because I care for you. All your care, all your concern, all your worry, cast it all on me. But see, the devil tries to make us feel guilty if we enjoy life while we have a problem. We think we need to figure it out and think about it and figure it out and ask all of our friends who already don't know what they're doing what we should do. What would, what would you do about this situation? You better take a look and see what kind of mess their life's in before you start getting advice from them. In John 16, 26, this is the seventh time in John 14, 15, and 16. Out of three chapters in the Bible, this is the seventh time that Jesus says the same thing. At that time, you will ask and pray in my name, and I'm not saying that I will ask the Father for you, for it will be unnecessary. You can ask in my name, and whatever you ask, it will be done for you. So, the first roadblock to answered prayer <laughs> is just not praying. Is there anybody here that is like I used to be, where you just, you try everything and then you say, well, I guess all I can do is pray. <laughs> I've tried everything I know and nothing that I'm doing is working. I guess all I can do is pray. Well, guess what, honey? You could have prayed to start with and saved yourself that headache, backache, misery, worried days, and all those things because Apart from me, ye can do nothing. Well, I really hope that today's teaching has made you even more excited about praying and partnering with God for your needs. You know, when we want something from God, when we need His help, we need to ask Him for it. James 4, 2 says, you do not have because you do not ask. That's so simple. Ask. God is a good God, and He wants to meet your need. Well, this handsome little guy's name is David, and he's 12 days old. He was born two months early, and he weighs 1.6 kilos. You know, if it wasn't for this wonderful home here in Kampala, Uganda, that cares for orphan and abandoned children, he would not have made it. But because of the work that the people here are doing, and we're in partnership with them, many children are having an opportunity for a brand new life. So we just want to thank you for being involved. I think it's a great work. God bless you.
De muziekleraar van Beethoven noemde hem een hopeloze componist. Een krant ontsloeg Walt Disney met het argument dat het hem zou ontbreken aan creativiteit. Albert Einstein werd door zijn leraar als geestelijk achtergebleven bestempeld. Well, you know, you have greatness on the inside of you too. And no matter how many challenges you have in life, I'm here to tell you, don't you ever give up. De New York Times bestseller schrijfster Joyce Meyer zal je inspireren om ondanks moeilijke levensomstandigheden sterk te blijven. Bestel nu het boek Geef Nooit Op via onze website joy-meijer.nl of bel 026 20 22 100.